And now let's talk a little bit about the Reynolds number. By definition, Reynolds number is the density of the liquid multiplied by the velocity multiplied by the inner diameter of the pipe divided by the dynamic viscosity of the liquid. Reynolds number represents the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces. So as you can see in the formula, we have dynamic viscosity in the denominator of the equation. That tells us that the more viscous your fluid is, the less freely it will move. So going back to our analogy of steering a cup, when you have high viscosity in your cup, it's hard for you to steer the cup. And the same concept applies here. When you have high viscosity liquid in a pipe, it's hard for it to get mixed and flows in different directions. And therefore, it will tend to flow in a laminar fashion because it is not freely moving in different directions. So looking at this equation right here, when you have high viscosity of liquid, the Reynolds number will be lower and therefore it moves towards being more laminar. On the other hand, when you have lower viscosity, you can imagine it's easier for it to flow in different directions and therefore more turbulence should be expected. There is something to note here where there is a misconception in the industry related to laminar and turbulent flows. One of them assuming when you have laminar flow, the velocity profile of the fluid is uniform. And that is simply not true because if you look at this graph over here, the velocity profile of a laminar flow is not uniform where the maximum velocity is expected to be at the center of the pipe and the velocity goes down or decreases as you move towards the side of the pipe. This is related to the shear stress experienced by the fluid where the shear stress is maximum at the wall of the pipe and it gets lower as you move to the center of the pipe. I'm not gonna go into detail on that in this training, but there are some literatures that talk about that. The one important thing that you need to understand here is when you're performing any types of analysis, for example, uh, wax deposit analysis, or any other types of analysis that require the velocity profile of the fluid, the closer you are to the wall, the lower the velocity is and, and the particle of fluid on the wall may not even move at all under laminar flow. In contrast, when you have turbulent flow indicated by Reynolds number greater than 4200, now you have the particles of the fluid moving freely, creating some chaotic movements that causes the turbulence of the flow. In turbulent flow, you have almost uniform velocity of the particles of the fluid, and it moves like a plug along the pipe. And something that I would like to highlight in this training is when you're performing an analysis that requires mixing of the fluid, let's say you're mixing two chemicals in the pipeline, the turbulent flow is what you want to have and make sure your Reynolds number is greater than 4200. For example, when you have chemical A here, mixing with chemical B, the turbulent flow will help you to create a mixture between these two by allowing the particles of the fluid to move freely and creating some chaotic movements.